Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to talk to you about all things related to frost in your attic. So here in Minnesota, we're kind of in the middle of a long cold snap. It's we've had sub-zero temps for a couple of weeks in a row now, but it's been especially cold. I mean, we'll get sub-zero temps all the time, but we've had sub-negative 20 temps for quite a few days now. So it means that a lot of Minnesota homeowners, thousands of them, maybe tens of thousands of them, surely, will have a lot of frost accumulating in their attic. This has been going on for several weeks now where you get more and more and more frost accumulating. And as soon as we get a warm up, which is in the forecast right now, it's supposed to start warming up here in the Twin Cities in about a week. As soon as that happens, all of that frost in all of these attics is going to melt. And when that happens, it's gonna come down, it's gonna stain people's ceilings. It's going to get the, it's gonna have water leaking out of light fixtures, out of recess lights, out of bathroom exhaust fans, out of any penetrations in the ceiling. And people are gonna start seeing water dripping into their living spaces and then people kind of freak out. So this is supposed to be proactive. I want you to be able to watch this video, take the time to check out your own attic, see if everything's covered in frost. And if it is, get on the phone with an insulation contractor and hire them to come out and fix what's causing all that frost. That's, that's really the proper fix is to hire an insulation contractor. So what causes this frost? It's a result of warm, moist air leaking up into your attic space. When that happens, it condenses on cold surfaces. When it's not too cold outside, when it's say 10, 20 degrees outside, you're gonna see frost accumulating at the coldest parts of your attic which is going to be the nail heads. Now you've got metal going through, it's conducting that cold to the attic space and it will be the coldest part. So you'll see frost on all the nail tips initially. That's the first sign of a frosty attic. And as the temps fall and your attic gets colder and colder, you end up with frost accumulation on other surfaces such as the roof sheathing, eventually you can have it on the roof framing, and you can even have it on roof vents themselves. Even though the whole idea is if you have a bunch of roof vents, you're not gonna get frost accumulation in the attic, I can tell you it doesn't matter. Roof vents or not, if you have a bunch of air leaks, you will end up with frost in your attic given sufficient moisture in your home and cold enough temperatures outside. So that's what causes frost. It's warm air getting up in your attic. Don't listen to people who tell you you have frost in your attic because you don't have enough vents. The presence or absence of roof vents does not lead to frost in the attic. It's warm air getting up in your attic space that causes it. So how do you fix it? Well, like I said, you hire an insulation contractor and they're not gonna come and add insulation. Adding insulation would only make the problem worse. And let's think that through. If you've got a frost problem in your attic, it gets really cold and then you have moisture condensing, if you were to simply add insulation, you could potentially make your attic even colder, stopping some of that heat transfer, but insulation itself does not stop air movement. What stops air movement is air sealing. It's a matter of getting up in the attic and having somebody manually seal off all of these passageways called attic bypasses for warm, moist air to leak up into the attic. And it's gonna be places like around plumbing vents, around wall top plates, around wires penetrating top plates of walls, around the furnace vent. It could be unsealed bath fan ducts. There's lots of places where that air can leak into the attic. And a trained insulation contractor will know where to look for all of these places and they'll seal it all off. At least that's how it works here in Minnesota. You get outside of Minnesota, I can't speak for your insulation contractor, but a good insulation contractor will take care of all that. While they're at it, maybe they'd wanna add some insulation too, but this has nothing to do with that. It's all about sealing the attic lid. That's how you stop the frost accumulation in your attic. Now, 
let's say that's not in the works for you, let's say that's not in the budget, or you can't get an insulation contractor to come out for months because they will surely be all booked for months after this warm up that's predicted right now. Let's say that's not in the cards for you. What else can you do to help reduce the amount of frost accumulation in the attic? Number one, reduce the humidity in your home. The more humidity you have in your house, the more frost is going to accumulate in your attic. And the first and most obvious thing to reduce your indoor humidity is if you have a humidifier, turn it off, especially if it's a whole house humidifier. Now I know some of those whole house humidifiers are designed to adjust your indoor humidity based on what the outdoor temperature is. It's called an automatic humidifier, but you really need to dial down the humidity levels when it's really cold outside. And I'm talking like 20% humidity in your house, which is extremely dry and uncomfortable. Nobody likes humidity levels like that. People install humidifiers because when it's that dry, they want to crank it up. But I'm telling you, Minnesota houses will not tolerate that when it's this cold outside. So you got to have it cranked way down. If you have uncontrolled humidifiers like room humidifiers or those big gigantic whole house humidifiers that sit on wheels, those things cause problems. My advice is turn them off. Yeah, I know you're going to get cracked skin and you know sore throat and things like that, but I guess you got to weigh your options. It's temporary health of yourself where your body will fix itself or it's your house where it will not fix itself. So you weigh your options. I'm telling you what you can do if you want to prevent frost from accumulating in your attic. At my own house, we do not own humidifiers. That's my advice there. Another thing to do is make sure that you're removing sources of humidity. Don't hang up your clothes to dry inside your house when it's really cold outside. When you take a shower, turn on the bathroom exhaust fan, let it run for an hour after your shower. It takes a long time to get humidity levels back to normal. Preferably, you would install timers on your bathroom exhaust fan switches. You'd, you'd replace the switch with a timer where you just press a button that says 60 and you run that fan for 60 minutes. That's a good way to do it. You can even buy humidity sensor switches where it senses the humidity and it turns on automatically. I installed one of those in one of my bathrooms and I love it. Now I, I'll tell you, I'm paranoid. I just hit the button as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I turn the shower on, I turn the, I turn the fan on and I let that thing run for a solid hour, regardless of what the humidity sensor figures out. So big fan of those. Use bathroom exhaust fans. In the kitchen, use a kitchen exhaust fan if it exhausts to the outdoors. Cooking generates a lot of moisture. Boiling water. If you have a gas appliance, if you have a gas stove, gas oven, just burning natural gas in your home and venting it to the inside as these cooking appliances do, that adds a lot of moisture to your home. Anytime your oven is running, if you have a kitchen exhaust fan, that should be running at the same time. And then finally, if you have an air exchanger in your home, use it. That's going to be called either a heat recovery ventilator or an energy recovery ventilator. It's a device that changes out the air in your home. Those things will dramatically reduce indoor humidity levels and usually they're going to have a control that lets you select how often it runs and that should be adjusted based on the outdoor temperature. The colder it is outside, the more you want your air exchanger running. That will really help to reduce indoor humidity levels in your house. And finally, one more thing to consider when it comes to frost accumulation in your attic is the drive be behind how much air wants to leak up there. Houses experience something called the stack effect. It's where air wants to leak in at the lowest levels of your home. It gets warmed up and warm air rises because it's lighter. The, that warm air rises up and it naturally wants to leak up into your attic space. That's, that's the way things go when all other things are equal. That you'll always have that going on. But your furnace can actually make things a heck of a lot worse. If your ductwork is not properly balanced, 
meaning let's say you have a, a bunch of returns in your basement. They, they pull air out of the basement into the furnace and then that air is supposed to come back out through supplies in your basement at the same rate, then your ductwork is pretty much balanced. But a lot of times people will want to shut off the supply registers in the basement or you have really leaky ductwork where you have a bunch of return ductwork throughout the basement and none of it's sealed off properly. So you end up with a lot more air wanting to come out of the basement than what's supplied there. Well, what ends up happening at the upper levels? It means you're pulling air out of the basement and you're pushing it to those upper levels, dramatically increasing the stack effect. This means a lot more frost in the attic and it leads to other problems in the attic such as ice dams and uh, condensation on the sheathing and it can lead to mold problems. It can lead to a lot of issues. So you don't want to have unbalanced HVAC ductwork. One really simple test you can do if you have a house with a basement is take your basement door, turn the blower fan on at your furnace and take your basement door and close it so it's just, just about an inch away from being fully closed and see what happens. If you have unbalanced ductwork, that door may just close all by itself. And another trick is you can, you can just hold a tissue up to that opening and you can see is the tissue sitting flat, which is what it should do if your ductwork is balanced properly, or does it get sucked into the basement? That means you have a basement that sucks and it means that you're going to have more frost accumulation in your attic. Now these are advanced techniques and you know if, if you do discover you have a home like this it's going to take a lot more work for an HVAC contractor to go around and air seal all of your ductwork but these things do make a difference. Now again this is advanced stuff I'm telling you start with the real easy stuff but if you licked a lot of the easy stuff and you still have problems you can move on to these steps. So. That's what's going on with the frost in your attic. And the last part, what do you do if you, if you have a lot of frost accumulated in your attic and you're worried about what happens when it melts? You know, I, I apologize, but I don't have great advice for you. I've seen homeowners do some really crazy things. I've seen people put tons of fans in their attic. I've seen people lay down tarps in their attic. I'm sure all of these things help, but I wouldn't consider any of them to be an elegant solution. You, you're going to have some problems for a short period of time. My advice is move forward and try to prevent it from happening again in the future. That's it. Best of luck. Thank you for watching. Take care.